Okay, so Ralph waited all day to ride his motorcycle around the lobby, but once he did, all his cousins came out and wanted a, a turn, and they were giving him a hard time saying he wasn't sharing and he wasn't nice and things like that. Ralph was hurt by their words. I, I am not selfish. I'm not spoiled, he insisted as he tried to drag his motorcycle away from all those clutching paws. In his heart, he didn't feel selfish. He only wanted something that was his alone. A mouse so rarely had something he could call his own. You're greedy, said a cheeky outdoor mouse. Then all the mice, down to the littlest one who was tangled in the fridge of the fringe of the carpet, began to chant. Ralph is greedy. Ralph is greedy. Ralph is greedy. Ralph finally lost his temper and squeaked at the top of his voice. Beat it, you, you rotten little rodents. Try and make us. The outdoor mice were defiant, but Ralph could tell they were not as brave as they were pretending to be. Shocked and hurt by such strong language, the little indoor mice fell silent. They looked at Ralph with such sad eyes that Ralph felt ashamed. You said bad words, said one, his voice filled with reproach. I'm going to tell on you. My mom wouldn't like you calling me those bad words. Ralph felt terrible. Aw, oh, come on. It's just that my motorcycle's wearing out. The tires are getting thin, and if they wear out, where am I going to get another pair? But the little mice would not accept it, his excuse. Yeah, but we don't have a motorcycle at all, said one of them. Uh, I know, but, began Ralph, not knowing how to finish. It wasn't his fault the young relatives didn't have motorcycles. Still, maybe he had used language too strong for their little ears. He was only trying to make his pack of pushing, shoving, grabbing relatives behave. Matt, the handyman, must have understood Ralph's feeling, for he came to the rescue. Shoo! he said, loud enough to scare the little mice, but not loud enough to terrify them. The words sent them scrabbling back to their hiding places. Thanks, Matt, said Ralph. Oh, think nothing of it. Matt gave the fire one last poke with the poker before he retired for the night. He left the rapidly drying puddles for Ralph, who took another ride through them. Although the water still fanned out from his wheels, somehow the fun had gone out of motorcycle riding for that night. Wearily, Ralph pushed his motorcycle back to the cave under the clock where it was safe. Even though he was wet and numb with cold from falling in the puddle, he lovingly wiped mud and paw prints from his chrome spokes with bits of shredded Kleenex. When he began to wipe down his chrome exhaust pipes, he discovered they wiggled, loosened by those tugging paws. The rear wheel shock absorber was loose too. When Ralph had wiped off all the mud and had polished his chrome, he rummaged through the remains of his nest for a bit of carpet fringe. Unfortunately, it turned out to be too thick for tying his exhaust pipes back in place. He felt worse and worse as he began to groom his damp fur. His tires were so thin he no longer wanted to risk the wear of riding them on the rough surface of the carpet. His motorcycle was wearing out. None of his relatives liked him. They were going to tell on him. In the morning, his mom would come downstairs to lecture him on the evils of being selfish and using bad language. She would also lecture him on his duty to be a good example for the little mice. Ralph pushed the nest together again. I'm a bad mouse, he thought, filled with gloom and guilt. I'm the rotten rodent not my cousins. As he climbed into his nest and curled up with his tail tied around his body, he wished he could leave the mountain view in so he'd never have to face them again. But how could a mouse leave in the wintertime 
when there was snow on the road and the wind howled. He would freeze or starve or get blown away by the winter wind, or all three. <sighs> Ralph shivered, pulled his tail more tightly around his body, closed his eyes. And that is the end of chapter one. Chapter two, Ralph's decision, we'll catch tomorrow. See you later.